Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything NFL Week 15 Gambling Picks Against the Spread. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotta love them sweet jams. Of course, you can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave us some comments. Tell us what your picks are this week. We're uh, we're getting right. We're getting right. I went 3-1-1 one, and one last week. Uh, I'm getting there. You know, I, I got a little ways to go. That's all right. But I'm going I'm to get it by the end of the season. I'm going to get back to 500. We're going to be just fine. I'm, I'm not nearly in the NFL what I am in college. So I didn't write down all the all the stats. Uh, you you didn't have a good week last week. I think you went like one and four. I don't I mean, it was, to be honest, I don't remember. It was it was not good. I did a really good job Sunday. That's, you did, you did well in uh, in college, yeah. Sorry. College was, I'm pull, uh, was I'm great. Pull, I'm pulling it up now. That's good. So you That's do the ad reads and all the other stuff, and I'll figure it out. Smackapparel.com. You can find all kinds of amazing merch and T-shirts, etc. for your favorite pro and college teams. Use the promo code WIN. That is W-I-N. You'll get 20% off your order no matter how big that thing is. I'm telling you. Go check them out. You, they got some awesome shirts, some novelty shirts, some hate shirts, some whatever. What'd you do? Two and one? Two, one and one? What'd you yeah, do? Yeah, it was two, one and one. Two, one and one. Okay. Okay. No, Maybe not, I was wrong. It did really good. Yeah, that's that's not bad. That's no. that's winning. Made some cheese. Uh, so, smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN. You get 20% off your order, no matter how big that thing is. And if your order is over $40, they're going to ship it to you for free. You got to get your Christmas shopping done anyway. Go to smackapparel.com. And check out what they got to offer. I guarantee you will be impressed. It's a good thing. You will also be impressed with Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. But along with that, they got all sorts of other stuff as well. Steakhouses, concerts, comedians coming through, golf courses whenever it warms back up. All kinds of stuff down there. Tunica, Mississippi is the place to be. They are the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. You went two one and one. I went three one and one. Not bad. Nope. Not bad. Not bad. We did okay I'm last two, week. I'm two games back from five hundred. That's a, what. Uh, do you still have it no, open? No. I All right, either way, I think I'm. I think I'm like six back or five back or something like that. But either way, not that big a deal. We're good. Go make sure you enter into the pick'em contest. Uh, we had somebody win, and they had to win on the tiebreaker last week, and I cannot remember who it is. And I apologize, but I will get that corrected by next week. I'll just name them out both next week. Um, You're a 33-39. I'm 32 34. All right, so I'm six back. Six back. Okay, I can get there. I can get there. I mean, we got, what? This is week 15? I got three weeks before the postseason. That's right. And then we still got the postseason. So, what's okay. up? Yeah, we uh, we did okay in the postseason last year. So, I don't see why that would be uh, an issue this year. So, of course, you can find all of our picks, all of our stuff over at winningcureseverything.com. You can enter our football picks contest over there as well. You win prizes from Tunica, Mississippi every single week. Whoever wins the week wins the prize. This ain't a uh, season-long thing, so if you're just wanting to join in for the first time this week, jump in. It's a weekly contest. The winner gets gear. It's awesome. So let's uh, let's go ahead and fire into this. I'll go ahead. We both got five this week, right? Yes, sir. I'm going to give out pick number one for me. The Rams are going to Dallas. And this looks way too easy. Dallas has lost a couple of games in a row to not very good teams. Well, I take that back. They've lost three in a row. Two were really good teams. One was to the Bears, who we did not think was very good, but they put up 31 on them Cowboys last Thursday. Cowboys had a little extra time to prepare. They played on Thursday. Now they get to play on Sunday afternoon at home. The Rams had a division game. Against Seattle, they've won a couple of games in a row now after they got embarrassed on national TV by the Ravens. They look like they got everything right. They are looking like they're making a playoff push. This line opened at the Cowboys minus four. A four-point favorite at home, and it has been bet the other way. And you, you sometimes you look at this and you see, all right, do we have reverse line movement? Do we have anything? Nope. Everybody and their mother 
is betting on the Rams. I'm going the opposite way. Give me the Cowboys plus one here. I don't have a good reason for you. I think that Dak Prescott will be able to find a way to get Zeke and them boys back into the offense. I don't know how. I don't know why. Stuff like this happens in the NFL. I'm going to go with the Cowboys plus I one. I, I think they win the game here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm rolling the Cowboys. Who, uh, who you got for your first pick? Well, you talked about that Bears team. Looking a whole lot better, much improved. The offense is finally starting to get going. Yeah. Scored 24 points last uh, last game. Well, 31, 31 last 31 game. 31 last game, 24 the one before that. Um, and uh, they're playing the Packers team. That 10 wins, they're leading the division. They look good, but their record looks good. They don't look good. I mean, they not, had not an right ugly now. win against the Redskins. Who, listen, Trubisky's bad. He's not Dwayne Haskins bad. No. I, I I think this is going to be one of those games where it's going to be hard. It's going to be close. I'll take the four and a half point head start, and it's and, only fifteen degrees for yeah, the high that day. Yeah, and I think I've got a shot at winning the game. I, so, I'm with you. That's I tough think I might games. have the winner. Yeah, I don't think they're going to just sweep the division, and so far they have swept the division. So makes. Sense. I think at some point in time this all comes back to the fold. Everybody brings it all back in at the end of the season, and uh, and yeah, I think I think we're going to get a maybe a Bears win, but but maybe a field goal game. That's, I could I could see that. I think this will be low scoring, yep. like it's really cold. You know, every, they're just going to hit each other a lot. Agree. And I, I I love games like that, especially in the cold. Especially in the cold. Next one up for me, the Bills. Coming off a loss to the Ravens, they got to go against the AFC North again. Going to Pittsburgh, going to Heinz Field. Steelers are a two-point favorite here. Neither one of these teams has really beaten a good team yet. And we don't really know that either one of these teams is a, a really good team right now. Steelers, impressive coaching job by Tomlin. Uh, you got all kind of guys out with injuries, and they are still finding ways to win. They look better this year than they did at this point last year. And that's insane. There's no James Conner right now. There's no Juju Smith-Schuster. Obviously, Mason Rudolph was not playing well enough, so now you got Doug Hodges in there. Uh, I like the Steelers in this spot again. They are, I understand they're the favorite here, but consistently underrated for whatever reason. It, it seems weird that they would be favored here, because I think the majority of the country would be on the Bills. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Yeah, I think you're wrong on that. I think it's pretty I, even. I, I feel like the Bills should be favored in this spot. And they're not, which makes me think I need to go with the Steelers. Uh, Devlin Hodges has looked really good at quarterback. Now, he, he hasn't played a defense like this. But yeah, Rams defense is like this. Is the Rams defense as good as... Is the Bills? And they're a really good defense. And it I mean they look good against the Rams. They're a really good defense. So yeah. I Oh the I mean I'm sorry. The Ravens defense is a good defense. Yeah, but Devin oh, Hodges. Oh, he didn't play them. That's yeah, right. I mean he he did for like the last quarter and a half or yeah, whatever. That didn't count. And, and that was that was okay. the, that was the team I was talking about, and that's you're right. He was he wasn't there great. He wasn't there long. Yeah. So I we'll see. Like this may be this may be a mess up here, but I, the Steelers at home, uh I like them in this spot. I'm going to take the Steelers minus two here. Okay. I'm not going to be long about this. I'm taking the Bills. I, I think the Bills' defense is is going to make Duck look bad. He hasn't. He hasn't gone. I mean, he, he looked good to serviceable against the, the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals are a team that's done. I don't think they're good at football right now. I think they're, they've lost their way. The entire NFL has figured them out. Um, and they just don't. And, it, and I don't think that it's a – Scheme thing. I don't think that you just clean house again or start over. They got to get. They got to get talent. They don't. Yeah, have they, they need players. players. Don't anything. But but that's the exact same way I'm looking at this this Steelers team, and I I think the skill players on offense for the Bills are good enough to put points up. Are they going to score thirty? No, but you know I don't think they need to. I, I don't think you I mean, need I, to. I, I think the first. Steelers. I think the first one to seventeen wins this game. I think the Bills can get there. I don't see the Steelers scoring. Okay, okay. So head-to-head head on that one. Pick number three for me. Look, I'm going to San Francisco. 
The Falcons are getting 11 points. And I understand Calvin Ridley's out. Julio Jones been banged up. I don't know what has happened. Matt Ryan is looking good again. Devonta Freeman is back. Scored his first touchdown on the year. Last week, yeah. On the year. I don't know what is going on with the Falcons, but they are looking better. And I don't think it's going to save Dan Quinn's job by any stretch of the imagination. But the 49ers have been on a gauntlet here. I mean, they have played some tough, tough teams just back to back to back to back. And now they get to go home in the comfortable confines of Levi Stadium. You got, this, team. you got this terrible Falcons team coming in. Look, 11 points, they might win by 10. I mean, they could end up blowing them out by 30. But it seems more logical to me that they end up winning by a touchdown, something like that, because they might just take this game a little easier than maybe they should. They're coming back. They're feeling real good about themselves. And then you got a feisty underdog that's starting to play really well. I'm going to take the Falcons plus the 11 here. I don't know that they win the game outright. I, I seriously doubt that they do. But can they keep it within 11? I think so. So I'd give me the Falcons plus 11 here. I, I'm not touching this game on these picks, but I'm going to tell you, Kyle Shanahan going up against his old team. He knows this offense backwards and forwards. I don't think I don't think this offense looks good this week. You they, might be right. They only scored they scored forty against a bad Carolina team. They scored eighteen against the Saints. I, I think they scored less than eighteen. Yeah. And I think this 49ers team figured out how to score the football last week. Oh, they most certainly Holy did that. Holy crap, I didn't see that at all. No. Uh, I, I saw them winning the game. Thought it was going to be a twenty-four to twenty ball game. Yeah, and it was like twenty-seven to twenty-eight at halftime. So. It was uh, what was the note on it? It first game that both teams had uh, blew the like total. Yeah, scored yeah. more than, than more the than total. The, what the total was. Yeah, and both it, teams. since like nineteen sixty-six or something. Yeah, it was crazy, Just insane. So, all right, my next game, I am going to Kansas City. Okay, and congratulations, Kansas City! You just won your Super Bowl. You took everything you had. To beat the New England Patriots, you broke a 21-game win streak at home or whatever, and uh, and that's that's awesome. Congratulations. It took everything you had to do it. Now you have Drew Locke and one of the hottest football teams in the country coming into your house, and this is not the same Broncos team that you got to play a couple of weeks ago. No. I, this It's just not. They are, they are totally different. They look explosive on offense. In the trenches, they are pushing people around and beating people up. I think that Chiefs team was in a fight. I'm talk, You talk about a letdown. I think I think they can get got here. But I get a 10-point head start. I get a double-digit yeah. head start in the NFL. I'm taking all those points. Mahomes got a hand issue. We don't know how hard or good that is. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think the Broncos got a shot to win this football game. Yeah, I could see it. I mean, they were playing really, really well, and now they got Drew Locke in there. Man, I mean, the defense just looks like the weight of the world has come off their shoulders. And and they're missing guys. It, oh, yeah. Uh, Von Miller didn't play last week. Don't know that he's going to play this week. Philip Lindsay just looks like he's got life in his legs like you haven't seen all year. I, I really, really like the way that they've looked the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. Uh, of course, hang around for the end of the podcast. Uh, we will have TJ Reeves, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter, and the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast. He jumps on with us every week to go over NFL games and, and discuss what's going on in the league. So make sure you check that out at the end of the show. Next game up for me, and I think you as well, the Vikings giving up two and a half at the Chargers. Now, the Chargers put a beating on Jacksonville last week. Right. 45 to 10. Now, I think that's becoming a common thing. Of teams just beating the hell out of Jags? Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, I mean, it's happened two weeks in a row now. And I think it will continue to happen. Um, and they're going to clear house and, and all that. Vikings, over the years, haven't looked great on the road. And I get that. And they're going to L.A. I mean, that another team from this division, the team that's leading this division... Went to L.A. just a few weeks ago and got it handed to them. The Packers went in and got demolished. I think they only scored one touchdown in that game, right? Yep. 
just unbelievable. And the Chargers have not been good this year. I think it's a different story here. I like the Vikings here, minus two and a half. They are still in a division race. Yes, you still have the Packers, but you you can't afford a loss here. No, because you, you're in a wild card race as well. Yes. You the need, wild card's not sewn up yet. Nope, but you're only one game over the Rams, and they are playing like gangbusters right now. You got to keep winning. Uh, Vikings minus two and a half at the Chargers. I think that Kirk Cousins comes out, looks pretty good. Uh, obviously, Dalvin Cook playing well. That that will continue here. Uh, give me the Vikings. Yeah, I think you're getting a short line here just because people saw the Chargers just explode all over the Jags. And yeah. and I think, man, that team scored 40 last week. How are they not favored at home and whatever? I, I just, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I think that was fool's gold. I appreciate it. I like the Chargers a lot. I I think the Vikings are going to win this game, and I think they can win by a field goal. I think they win by a touchdown. It wouldn't shock me if they beat them by double digits. I agree. Uh, last game for me, it is, I'm, I'm going to Phoenix. Okay. And what you said earlier makes all the sense in the world. I think everybody has figured out this Cardinals team. And that includes the Cleveland Browns. Browns only a two and a half point favorite on the road here. Like the Browns need wins in the worst way. They just, they, they're still trying to get right on the season. I don't think Freddie Kitchens last past this season. But that doesn't mean that they can't get wins in the meantime. This team is significantly more talented than the Cardinals. Uh, they can put points on the board. I mean, you just saw it last week. I mean, they yep. put points up against the Bengals. They will do the same here. And they, the Browns are super dysfunctional right now. They need something to take some of the state. I mean, they've got two wins, and in both their last two wins, nobody's talking about the wins. No. They do something to draw attention away from winning. Yeah. They need something to go right. I think they will get right this week. They win this game and shut the hell up. They're uh, they're only favored by two and a half. I can win with a field goal here. Give me the Browns. I think that it, on defense, they are significantly more talented than yeah. this Cardinals offense. Totally agree. On offense, I think they are significantly more talented than this Cardinals defense. Uh, I don't see any way that the Browns, uh, unless they just vomit all over themselves, which is possible. Yeah. Not outside of the realm of possibilities. But, but I, I don't see it here. No, I, I'm with you. I think I think the same thing, man. My fifth game, we're on Cincinnati. And that's just it. That's just the facts. Okay? You done pissed them off now. So the Patriots were going along. Yeah, for those that, that don't watch were, this show regularly. They were 10-0. and 0. Chris is a Pats guy. So... They were just they were Keep just rolling mind. along and they were quietly winning games and they had this unbelievable defense and a very stagnant offense and they they weren't making a lot of headlines, they weren't making a lot of noise, and they were just it's kind of the quietest Patriots game of all. Then they lost to the Ravens. That's a really good team. They lost to Houston. Eh, they they might be a playoff team. Then they lost to the Chiefs. Yeah, they did they? Did they lose to the Chiefs? <laughs> See, now you done pissed them off. You take two touchdowns off the board. Deal call. I mean, and I'm not trying to to do the oh the refs took it for. Listen, that's fine. That's fine. Mark my words. We will remember last week was the day that you pissed off Bill Belichick and you pissed off Tom Brady. They both looked like they were bored, and they both looked like. This season was going to be the end of that marriage, and Tom was going to kind of just ride off into the sunset and move on. I don't think that's happening anymore. Well, and then and then on top of that, oh, you got another bullshit thing about Spygate or whatever from from this team. Yeah. So if they weren't mad they filed, already, they 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 had permission to be here. They brought in a camera crew. They don't sneak cameras up their buttholes to get in the the stadium and videotape things illegally. They're 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 allowed to be there. They videotaped stuff for four hours. They got eight minutes of game film. They're like, oh, oh, you weren't supposed to record the game. Oh, man. Woo. We're we're I mean, once a cheater, always a cheater. Come on. They the Patriots are going to win this game by a thousand. <laughs> I mean, I t I told you, I was like double digits? Uh uh. I mean they could win this game with triple digits. I don't know how they're going to score all those points. Wait, what's the spread on this? It's nine and a half. All right. 
But it doesn't matter. They're going to kill them. As I'm going to kill them. I'm with you. And then the Bills are going to come in. And then they get to go to uh, – no, Miami comes to New England. And then it's 3-0 and in the playoffs. And then the horse in Lombardi, and it's over. You would have pissed them off. Before the Chiefs game, I fully believed they were going to be the two seed. They were going to be one and done in the playoffs. Tom and Bill were going to shake hands, and Tom was going to retire. Now, now you done pissed them off. See, you had a chance to get out of this unscathed. This is this is on you guys. That's going to wrap up the NFL gambling period. <laughs> uh, and now, TJ and I are going to have a very adult conversation. Yeah. We're two grown-ups having a mature conversation about this. Yes. So make sure and tune in, uh, which, I mean, it just, just right stay now. listening. Just stay listening right now. The host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter, he is TJ Reeves. Every single week, the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast hops in with us. He is TJ Reeves. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, your Bucks are looking really good right now, man. You uh, you're headed to Detroit this week. This is a refreshing change. Good to be with you that we're getting wins at the end of the year three in a row and looking to maybe make it four straight against a crippled Lions team. I'm liking this, kind of like an early present under the tree. And by the way, you cannot see me, but I am bowing to you, Gary Seegers. Three, (laughs) four, three on Three Dog Thursday, my podcast last week. Thank you, Miami of Ohio. Thank you, Cincinnati, for keeping it close but not winning against the Memphis Tigers. <laughs> and thank you, Denver Broncos, oh, yeah. which we'll get into, I guess, in a second here about that game with Houston. You did very well on Three Dog Thursday, and I even hit with a couple of underdogs taking Oregon in the Pac-12 title game, and I had the 49ers in that wild game with the Saints last week at the Superdome. Uh, just bonkers. What a what a playoff rematch that would be if it comes down to it between New Orleans and San Francisco. So lots didn't, of uh, drama, hey, and, and we had some underdogs last week. Didn't uh, didn't Brian Edwards hit one or two as well? Brian Edwards hit him, and so did Sean Green out yeah. of Los Angeles. We had six correct underdog picks on the podcast last week. So just in time for the season to be wrapping up here, we're starting to hit stride a little bit. So we love it on Three Dog Thursday. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So uh, the Bucks, of course, riding a three-game winning streak right now. Bruce Arians, like, how is the atmosphere around uh, around that organization right now? It has definitely changed around for the better. And he, he has said it in so many words a couple of times the last couple of weeks. Everything changes when you win games. Your attitude changes. Your confidence changes. Everybody's outlook on you. He goes, now suddenly people think we're good because we've won two <laughs> or three games in a row. And so now and now you can't get overconfident with that and think you don't have to work hard and think you don't have to be in there uh, at 6 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. looking at film and lifting extra weights and doing the stuff you got to do. Uh, that, that's the thing. Don't get complacent here because you've won a couple of games. And, guys, I will point it out here. Uh, We've joked about this on the show. Jameis Winston, three more interceptions last week, and a couple of them were just killers. One one run back by Darius Leonard, 80 yards for a touchdown. But it is remarkable that this stuff is not phasing him. He goes on to throw for 456 yards in the game last week, a career high, four touchdown passes. Brother Giannini, I'm saying to my people down on the field because we're looking at the stats, I'm going, he's got 398 yards at the end of the third quarter here in a close game. He could have five bills. He could have 500 yards in this game, depending on how many times you get it in the fourth quarter. He got to 456. So, again, Jameis keeping both teams in the game with the interceptions <laughs> and with the big throws for the Bucks. I believe that he is the most exciting quarterback in football right now because he keeps both teams in, exactly what you said. Yes. And – and he's got a stat line that that only he could have. I, I mean, he he. I think there are only like seven inter- incomplete passes because you've got all the completions, and then you've got the three picks. Between the picks and the and the touchdowns, he's got just as many picks and touchdowns as he does his incompletions almost. Well, and and interesting, Ball he's leading the, the NFL. 
right? He's leading the NFL in interceptions with 23 of them. No he's doubt. Second, he's second in touchdown that's passes. Right. Oh, yeah. And that is, as much as we might think that's unheard of, it's actually happened a couple of times even recently. A guy by the name of Drew Brees had the most touchdown passes and the most interceptions in the 2012 season back seven years ago. So it's not unheard of. And there was another occasion, I believe, where Peyton Manning led in touchdowns and in interceptions in the same season because you're just throwing the ball a bunch. So uh, that was, again, uh, I, that, I don't know I what the full stat. future holds. I, yeah. I saw that stat about Peyton Manning. It was uh, it, like he and Jameis were the exact same age like when, when he did that. So here's right. what Jameis has a chance to do right now. He's definitely going to hit the 25-25 mark of 25 touchdowns, 25 interceptions. He's at 26-23 and 23 now. He could be the first quarterback in history to be a 30-30 guy. That's insane. Can he get to 30-30? Can he get to 30-30? Well, and, and, and he knows he's got to, he's got to try to curtail this, uh, and now they've lost Mike Evans. I know we're dwelling on the Bucks, and we'll move on, but no, they, no, we've no, lost no. Mike Evans with the torn hamstring – it, it, it's pulled. It's some concern as to whether it's torn. Um, it would not surprise me if the audience is, is hearing us later in the week, previewing the weekend here as we get to Friday, Saturday, Sunday before the games, that they put Mike Evans on injured reserve. There are only three games left. The Bucks are all but eliminated from the playoffs. They may not put him on IR right now, but they might put him on IR next week if you're officially eliminated because what's the point? You need somebody else to come in and play receiver and you need the roster spot. Yeah. So just unfortunate. He's had a great year. He injured the hamstring on the long 61 yard touchdown play. And again, even without Evans, even with the interceptions, Jameis was lethal in the second half of the game. So I will not be taking the lions against my Buccaneers on three dog Thursday. I assure you of that in Detroit this weekend. I don't blame you at all. Now let's, uh, let's move into some of this week's games. I, I don't think you're going to touch this one, but it is an interesting line. Uh, the Broncos are getting 10 at the Chiefs. Chiefs, of <laughs> course, they're coming off of a massive win over the Patriots, uh, and we'll get to that before we get to the other games here in a minute because there's a lot going on in New England right now. Yes. Uh, the, the Broncos have looked really good for two straight weeks now, and they're getting 10 points at the Chiefs. Should that tell us something? or uh, uh, Drew, uh, Drew Locke. Uh, again, I, I must confess, I have only seen a few highlights of that game, but Drew Locke has obviously energized him. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm asking the winning cures guys. You're the experts on winning. How was Denver up 31-3 to at Houston? Uh, I, turnovers, I, I, I'm, I'm legitimately um, asking. Oh, they, well, the, I mean, this, this Vic Fangio finally has this team, I think, in his identity. They're running the football, and they're playing incredible defense, and Drew Locke is not having to do a lot. But – because they are running the football, controlling the line of scrimmage, and playing great defense, they are able to have big, big explosive plays. Drew Locke is hitting guys. These guys are getting open, and uh, and it is it is exciting football to watch. I think it's taken almost an entire year for Vic to get the team in his identity, and they finally have a trigger man. Yeah, it, they they got Drew Locke back off of. Uh, it, I don't think that he was on IR. No, no, he was just he just been hurt. He'd been hurt. He was. He was. So, he was on injured reserve, designated to return with the fractured thumb. They could yep. bring him back if they wanted to. You get two opportunities to do that, but you got to wait until at least like week nine, I yeah. think it is, if you yep. go on at the beginning of the year. And so obviously, he's the guy for the future that they're looking towards. But again, that was remarkable. Houston playing such great football, every reason to win, trying to battle for home field advantage, win the division, blah, blah, blah. And Denver just freight trained them in the first half. They made it a game finally in the fourth quarter a little bit. But that that one was surprising. And I'm actually surprised. I don't know about you guys. I know Kansas City at home, big win at New England, but they play a lot of close games right now. The Chiefs, that is a surprising large line there, Denver, KC. I don't know that I will take the Broncos, but it definitely surprised me. I don't know about you guys. Oh, 100%. 100%. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about this Patriots deal. They, I guess, are <laughs> we'll, we'll say they're busted. Um, right. They, they got video permits to go with one of their advanced scout guys to Cleveland for the Cleveland Cincinnati game, where their advanced well, this scout, was a film crew. This had nothing to do with football. This is right, not. But, this but, is not a, but they they sent a film crew to cover a 
a, a, a scout. Yes. An employee, okay. a right. scout. Yeah. Right. So they were scouting the Bengals for this coming week. And the film crew had set up and got part of, like they got eight minutes of footage of the Bengals' sideline. And <laughs> I, I look at it as... What do you As, think, TJ? What yeah. do you think? You're laughing over here. What do you All right. think? So I'm, I'm, I'm laughing for these reasons. Now, number one, I work for a competing NFL team, so I have to be somewhat careful here. But I think, look, look everybody, everybody knows the same thing. Uh, the first thing is, if there is any franchise right now in sports that doesn't get the benefit of the doubt anymore, it's the New England Patriots. I know Giannini, you're a Patriots guy, but they don't get the benefit of the doubt anymore on any of these things. That's number one. Number two, I love quoting the great base-stealing all-time great Ricky Henderson because he would always say to different people when he didn't understand something or he was mad at the media, explain that. Explain <laughs> that is what Ricky Henderson would say. Somebody explain that, that you are, for whatever this feature is going to be, videotaping the Bengal coaches for more than, let's say, a cutaway for like 30 seconds maybe a minute. What We need to know, we need to see, this is 2019, what were they taping? Because if they were taping coaching signals, this is bad news. This is, this is again, I don't know if the NFL just wants to shut it down. They've had so many controversies with the Patriots who continue to have success and win Super Bowls. Maybe the NFL does want to shut it down. But when it came out that they were taping the opposing coaches from a camera in the press box for, for eight minutes, I think everybody across the league is saying the same thing, which is, here we go again. You got caught. You were, you were there under the guise of doing a feature. Um, and, and I do not buy into the whole, well, this is completely separate. Who had, Brother Giannini, who had to sign off on his scout being interviewed? who absolutely, they don't, they don't let uh, assistant coaches talk during the entire season, basically. Yeah. So who had to sign off on letting a scout do an interview with this film crew? Who, who knew that the idea behind it was showing how he does his job scouting the other team? That's the idea. That's the premise behind the piece. That they were that they were putting together. So I, I do not buy into. Hey, this is completely separate. We had no knowledge. We had nothing to do with it. Uh, we know who had to approve the scout being talked to. All right. That's so all I'm, so I'm going to I'm going to tell you what what I think of this. And and I'm and I'm I promise you I'm not trying to just be biased and defend my guys here. But at the end of the day, they didn't come in with like spy cameras and something that you get from some sleazy you know creep shop down the road of a nanny cam. All right. <laughs> They came in with permits, with film crew. So what is a permit? Permit is a permission. They had to ask somebody to be there with this film crew while they were there. They were there for over four hours videotaping stuff, all right? right. In this four-hour football game span, they have eight minutes. And you're saying, well, if they got the coaches doing anything, well, if you film anything of the game, you're going to see a sideline. You can't just, like... Well, no, the but, uh, let's be specific. Out. Let's be specific. If it is zoomed in on their coaches, okay, making but you're signals, you're, you're making, making an assumption that it was zoomed in under that. That's why. And, that's why I use the word if. Yeah, if but, but it nobody is the knows case, that. Nobody knows. Well, that's that. that's why we need to know. We need to know what it was. And as for they had permission to be there, the Browns gave them permission to be there, but the Browns had no idea that the film crew was going to be filming the game. They believe that the film crew was there to interview the person that was in the press box. That's why they allowed the camera to be in the press box. For the record, just for the audience here on Winning Cures, there aren't video cameras allowed in the press box uh, during a game except a special circumstance like this because of exactly like what we're talking about. In other words, local television crews and whomever, you can't have your video guy up in the press box. They were being allowed to do that, I guess negligently, by the Browns under the guise of interviewing this scout and then allowed the camera to be there during the entire game, which but is usually not allowed. You, I get that. You say negligently, but if they got permission, then that's not negligent. If I well, come no, into your home the right Browns, now, he, he's that's saying from the Browns to protect, to protect the Bengals from the Browns, they should have paid attention that, hey, they're done interviewing the scout. And so that camera does not need to be in the press box rolling from the press box. Now, if you're talking about in the coach's 
uh, uh, area or up in the videographer's area, that's different. That's what you're allowed to do, but not in the press box. So uh, negligent from the standpoint so, that Cleveland should have had a PR person, should have had somebody there that understood they're still in here in the press area videoing during the game and videoing the field during the game, which is completely uncommon. That's all I mean, I'm sharing. I, I, okay, I get that that's uncommon, but I'm quite certain that, like, they obviously weren't hiding it. They were doing it out in the open for everybody to see what they were doing. It's it's not a thing of they were trying to fool someone. They had a crew in there, and they were doing something and abnormal. The, but it's not that they the get a different thing. view from the press box as if they were in with the camera crew people. They're not going to get a different angle or a better angle. Everybody, the camera angle guys get a better angle than anybody. Right. Well, and, and, and I, I agree and concede with this. It's not as if the Patriots need help to beat the Bengals. No. It's not, this, that is this, not the team that you I, would I do think, this to. I think this you would have done it to the Ravens before you played them or the Chiefs this past week before you played them. That's more believable. Well, so a camera crew is not going to help that offense get open. I mean, those just, this is just the worst set of skill players that the Patriots have ever had. This is the worst offensive line they've ever had in the 20 years that I've been watching them and they've been dominating football. Like, that, that a camera Camera crew's not going to help them with any of those things. It's just not. This is a complete nothing story. The original Spygate story is a complete nothing story. If you wanted to take the next hour and a half to rehash that, I got time. <laughs> I got nothing else to do, and I'll gladly do it. But we, um, we don't have time, all of as a matter all of <laughs> all of the things that people cry about the Patriots cheating is they've dominated the league for twenty years and nobody else has. It can't be that they're better than us because they're all nothing burgers. They just are. And this is a nothing burger. We will find out what the NFL says on that, if it is a nothing burger or not. We oh, will find out on that. They've them for all of these things that are nothing. So I know Roger Goodell's really good at being bad at his job. <laughs> Chris is just Chris is just trying to get me in trouble right now. Yeah. Oh, that I part. forgot that you work for the league. I apologize. These are <laughs> my thoughts, and these are not TJ's thoughts. I exactly. Apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Well, I don't apologize to Roger. Screw that guy. But I apologize to you, TJ, for putting you in a bad situation. Hey, you want to talk about some uh, some more games? <laughs> hey, why not? Uh, under the category of uh, can the Houston Texans really have been that bad last week? And are the te- are the Titans really this good after they dump truck uh, my man John Gruden and the Raiders? Boy, the the, the whole Raiders are back train uh, derailed in a hurry and has sixteen car pile up all over the side of the tracks right yes. now after what Tennessee did to them last week. I I just I like this spot Houston coming in where they're going to play them twice in the final three games of the season here. Uh, I, I think the Texans may be ready in Nashville. I'll take a strong look at that one on Three Dog Thursday and AFC South matchup, guys. At, you you brought up the Raiders. Uh, they've got Jacksonville coming in. Jacksonville has looked kind of bleh here the really last bad. Uh, this is a get right game. Weeks. Um, they are done. But I, they are I, in the oven at four fifty with the lemon butter on them. But and is Oakland? You, well, I mean that's uh, that's another good question. And Oakland is at home, one of the final games, the Coliseum. But ja- I mean Jacksonville. Uh, it has whatever metaphor that I love to bring on your show, licked the stamp and mailed it in. Yes. Whatever, whatever you want to say. <laughs> um, Shad Khan is likely going to wipe the slate clean of Tom Coughlin, Doug Marone, the coach. Uh, and they may start over from Nick Foles as well. I don't know that they keep him if they, if they, if they get rid of the GM slash VP of football that wanted him and, and the head coach that wanted him. So, uh, we'll see about the Jaguars going out there to Oakland. I don't, I don't know what to make of that game with so, uh, with Jacksonville going on the road. So I honestly thought that after the golly the 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 Chargers game with the Jags last week, I really thought that Marone was going to be fired this year this week, and Coughlin was going to come down and finish the season. Well, he he did that shot con back three seasons ago and fired the coach at the end of the year with a couple of weeks left. Uh, and you're right. I mean, I, my understanding though is the owner is so unhappy with all of them, including the GM, uh, underneath uh, uh, Coughlin, uh, who's responsible for a lot of the draft picks that have gone bust. So uh, it it may just be just ride it out here for three weeks, and you may see three more bad games for them, and that one's going to be an opening. We already know Carolina has an opening, and there may be two or three other ones uh, that are forthcoming. It always seems to be that way uh, in the NFL. It's, It's crazy, the lack of longevity, with the exception of Belichick, Sean Payton and Pete Carroll, Andy Reed, literally yeah. almost every other, and Garrett, and yeah. Garrett's on the hot seat, obviously, to be gone, 
with the exception of those first three and maybe Jason Garrett, nobody else has got any tenure with their team when you think about it, when you look at it. No, it, it's it's amazing. It really is amazing. Um, I, I was listening to some, some, some other NFL writers today, and they said they think as many as six jobs can come open this year. Mm-hmm. And it's just like my, my question is not six jobs available. Who are the six people that are going to take those jobs, and are we just going to get worse and worse in the coaching pool? Well, and maybe the names uh, Lincoln Riley and Brian Kelly come out of college football to the NFL. We Matt will Rule, see. David Shaw. Matt Rule, David Shaw. Although I do some think of the we need fresh David blood Shaw in the, the last NFL. couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, I, do, I do think yeah. some fresh blood in the NFL and not just more retreads and, and Agreed. OCs coming out. All right, so uh, so you've got Houston plus three that, that you will definitely look at on Three Dog Thursday. Let's, uh, let's talk about the Bay Area right quick before we let you go. The Falcons are getting 11. Is this something maybe you're going to be taking a look at on the 3 Dog Thursday podcast? You hit on one right there. I mean, Atlanta looked great at home last week, and I know they've lost Calvin Ridley now. Abdominal tear. He's out for the rest of the year. Julio Jones has been banged up. I don't know. I don't know who Matt Ryan's throwing to anymore. Can I get Roddy White out of retirement? <laughs> uh, Billy White Shoes Johnson from the old Falcons lore who back was, in the 70s on. and the early 80s. There was somebody I, that said during the Eagles game last night, uh, and we're recording this on, on Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah. But uh, was it Reggie Wayne? Was it, there was, I think it was Reggie yeah. Wayne <laughs> yeah. that tweeted yeah. out and said, uh, I could come out of retirement right now and be on this Eagles wide receiver yeah. core, and well, I'm sitting hear, in a bar right now. <laughs> did you hear that they were depleted with the injury to Alshon Jeffrey and, uh, and the other receiver that got hurt? that if they needed him, Josh McCown, the 38-year-old backup quarterback who I, I like. I got to know Josh in the 2014 season. He's been all around the NFL. I know his brother Luke uh, a little bit too because he was with the Bucks. Love the McCowns. Josh McCown was ready to play wide receiver and knew the routes. <laughs> they literally were contemplating on the sideline, we may need him to go line up for a couple of plays and run a route and maybe be open. And oh, he was willing fantastic. to go do it. That's how bad that it got. But this is this is what happens in the NFL. You get beat up at the end of the year, and you're having to press guys into duty. I just think it was such an emotional win for San Francisco, dramatic win for them. They had a tremendous season. Did it take something out of them? And I know Atlanta's got to go all the way west, just like San Francisco State in the east for playing those two games with Baltimore and with New Orleans. Uh, now Atlanta's got to go all the way west. But that's a lot of points for the Falcons, and I think they may keep it close. So that's another team we'll look at for Three Dog Thursday purposes. I will stay away from the Cowboys. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> getting, I think, a point or a point and a half at home with the Rams in a must-win situation. Just some interesting games as we come down the stretch uh, of the season here. You've got that right. Of course, you can find TJ at the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can find it on any of your favorite podcast apps. You can also find him on Twitter, at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, we always appreciate you coming in and knocking this out for us. Brother Giannini Sorry and I will trouble. resume. <laughs> we're we're going to, hey, Brother Giannini and I will resume him trying to get me fired on the Three Dog Thursday podcast <laughs> in addition to his underdog predictions. So I look forward to it. And Chris, you got something to live up to. All Your right. man Seegers was three for three last week. Well, we lost the college it, football slate. That, that hurts. Coming up, with, coming up with three dogs in the NFL might not be as easy. We will see. We will see what we can come up with for this week, but it'll be a lot of fun. Thank you, boys. Stay gainfully employed. All right, we appreciate TJ for hopping in here. He is always a good time. We appreciate him doing this with us every single week. Uh, He will be with us through the end of the football season. Go listen to the Three Dog Thursday podcast. It's a good listen. We, uh, We appreciate what he does. It's always fun. That's right. Go to winningcureseverything.com. We got everything about us over there. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, gambling picks, etc. Go check it out. Smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN and you will get 20% off there. And go check out Tunica. Tunica, Mississippi. The South's premier sports gambling destination. Tunicatravel.com is the website. Anything else we need to hit? I think that's it, my friend. That is it. All right, we will see you guys again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.